Welcome, this is Zangler, the Tesla Semi-Advocate, bringing you another episode of the uh, mysterious potential disappearance of the Manitowoc MLC 300. The MLC 300 is a lattice boom crawler crane, and it's a big, big unit. And we saw it right there on the northern side of the building just three days ago and um, came back to see what kind of progress has been made. And the big, the big mystery is, where has the crane gone? So I started the search over here at the northeast corner by the new guard gate. I stopped to see this um, excavator operator in action. He, uh, he changes uh, buckets. And then moves around and it looks like that he's filling in some of this underwater um, conduit work. This video was filmed on a Friday afternoon not exactly the perfect time of day for filming just a little bit after 12:30 but we do get a different perspective once we uh, once we watch this heavy equipment operator in action which I find to be fascinating a small fact is that when I was a little boy driving by heavy equipment construction in um, Colorado that was what I wanted to be when I grew up somehow I got into, into uh, being a programmer and they now they've they've come up with a fancier name now I'm a software engineer and data processing now is information technology Anyway, I still am fascinated by heavy equipment and um, enjoy tracking an operator. Okay, the hunt for the giant crane continues. Uh-oh, did we see something in the, in the background? Could it be that the crane just moved around the corner from the uh, north, northern, the west end of the north side to the um, south end of the west side? If you look closely, you can see it in, in the background. Mystery solved. Crane just moved. We'll get an, we'll, let's take a look at what it's, what it's done in two days since I last um, flew the drone. But before that, we'll take a good look around. Still waiting for further progress on the Mega Charger installation right here. I expect the Mega Charger here to be employed long before the um, factory is complete by the very extensive Tesla Semi fleet that is being used to, um, to do work not only to uh, not only are they validating the design still making improvements and putting high miles on it to discover any I issues that need to be remediated the um, production side of Tesla uses it extensively and every time I come up Electric Avenue I see um, at least half a dozen Tesla semis coming and going we are now going along the southern edge of the building to the main entrance. And um, interesting thing is, why do we think why do you, why do we think that the um, panel table and Mesmaster are still there when all of the corrugated steel roofing is in place? The answer may lie in the name of the Mesmaster. On this project, the Mez Master, the Mez as in mezzanine, was used for the roof. And however, 
it is also used for mezzanines. So I believe that they could still be um, installing mezzanines on the inside of this. And we would have very little visibility unless we caught them um, at just the right time going inside. And there was the Mezmaster right there on, on the um, sort of middle, middle left next to that crane, which is a large crane and dwarfed in size by the um, Manitowoc, excuse my pronunciation, but here is the stamping section. The roof is complete. I had expected to see the insulated um, roof material already being installed, but um, not yet. In the background, you can see that they had already installed four of the large AC units and one of the smaller ones. So it looks like they've only installed two more of the large ones and one more of the smaller units. By my um, by my uh, estimation, now we already know they can do way, they can do that at a much faster pace. Some of that time was clearly used to move the um, crane, and we'll talk more about that later. Right now, we're getting a good look at, and we lest we forget that um, Gigafactory One GF One here, what I like to call Legacy Giga Nevada, is every day is hard at work producing 2170 cells by Panasonic at the Panasonic end of the building. Those those cells are then passed to the Tesla team, and the Tesla um, puts them in battery packs and um, they also build drive motors here. Okay, so back. That second building in the background, if you're not already familiar, that is the pilot production semi-line. If you look closely, you'll see some Tesla semis. Now we're coming around the southwest end of the building, taking a look at the um, stamping building, section G, which was the last section built by design and clearly the most complicated and technical section with all of the work that was put into those stamping pits um, prior to the uh, steel going up. Here is our favorite crane and there you can see the two of those larger units were, were put up were installed onto section F, and one of the sm that smaller unit right in between the V of the crane was installed on section A. Section A is the the main one we're looking at in right here at the north west corner of the building. Section B is to the top, traveling along the northern so side, and then it goes from B to C at the northeast. D at the southeast, E at the middle south, and F at the south um, west end of the building, which is on the right, which is where the crane looks like it, where, where the crane did install two of those large units. Every one of those little, um, every one of those frames or form bases for AC units. So there's many more to go. And I believe that there might be, the reason that they might not have installed more of them is that they're not on site yet. That they're delivering them and obviously only able to put them in as quickly as they get them. Once again, we're gonna have um, what some might think an inord is an inordinate amount of uh, crane footage but um, we're gonna get some really good close-ups of the crane. One of, one of my very astute viewers, and if I was um, more diligent, I would've got their viewer's name, but that viewer speculated that some of the open patches of dirt around the um, building between the, uh, the poured concrete sections was left that way for the crane so that the crane could operate 
and then once the crane was do, done in a section that they would then start to fill it in and, and look at that. That viewer was correct. Thank you and uh, you get 10 bonus points. They put down the um, geotextile fabric and they're bringing dirt from around the other side of the building over over um, on the east side by the um, mega charger installation and they're using the giant caterpillar trucks I'm not sure of the, f of the size capacity but I believe that they're I do know that they um, they carry they carry as much as 96 tons of material we're gonna um, follow this caterpillar truck as it goes over and gets another load and the loader loads material into it once again to fulfill my um, curiosity to uh, in watching heavy equipment at work I am so tempted to say that's what she said but I wouldn't say that you can see the pile of dirt that um, has no doubt been set aside and put there just for this purpose. Every single one of these piles of dirt probably has an, a well-planned out purpose. One thing you've not seen on this project, I have not ever caught, is them having to tear out concrete and, uh, and redo it. like they've done in the Lone Star State. That top roadway is um, being worked on and that's going to be an, another alternate route into the Gigafactory, into the legacy Giga, Giga, Giga Nevada, and that should alleviate congestion at the main gate. Naturally, the big mystery and the questions I'm getting is what's going on in the inside. I have very little visibility into that. I have not seen much um, assembly line production equipment going in. But again, I only fly about every three days. We, did, we do know that they are focusing on the electrical setting up the electrical and routing it to each of the stations and um, for the equipment and robots that are needed. Again, I can't wait to see um, some of the bright red Tesla bridge cranes arrive. And stamping equipment and everything else, but stamping equipment, bridge cranes, those would be watershed events. Robots also, robot um, production equipment. That's one of the brand new um, AC units that were installed that we just saw and that we... At this point, we are going to get a very good look at this crane that has been put to bed um, by lowering the top um, boom I read a little bit about this um, Manitowoc MLC 300 and there's a uh, still picture of it from the manufacturer's website at the end of the video. Just in case you're curious, I am not very close to this at all. I'm using nine times view. Oh, the, um, the website points out that its maximum height is right around 350 feet as I um, as I um, guessed or uh, educated guessed by based on the height of my drone when I was at the same level 
So that was pretty cool. One of the things they, they, they mention on the manufacturer's website is how quickly this crane can be assembled on the site. It doesn't have outriggers um, for structural support. It was serendipitous that three days ago when I flew, we did catch it installing one of the smaller AC units. Somebody asked what they do if they when they break down, and how how, and I believe they would just be able to fix them, repair them, replace the parts that are broken. I don't think that they would. Um, I think it would be a rare situation that they would have to actually remove one of them and, and bring in a completely new one. If they did, that would require a crane. There's the own, I think you can see the acronym for the company that owns it, ACG, ACC, something advanced crane company. Many years of working in the in a IT industry, I'm fairly good at guessing acronyms. Since that business, our my business is loaded with acronyms, and if you ever listened to a conference call and you did, weren't in the business, you would have no clue what we were talking about. There's those counterweights. And I think if, at one point in time you can see the tracks where this crane uh, moved over here. Wouldn't that be? I, I wish I could get that coverage. Anyway, here's that here's that light final view of the crane. Thank you for joining, and uh, I'll fly again in two or three days.